Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics. Today, we want to talk about Hemichromis bimaculatus. It's the jewel cichlid. It's a relatively common fish in the hobby that I don't think gets enough love. It's an absolutely beautiful fish with a lot of red and blue spangling. So we're going to talk about how to care for them, how to breed them, so stay tuned. All right, everyone, so here we've got a 40-gallon breeder with some jewel cichlids. Uh, you're going to have to excuse some of the algae on the side of the glass. That is for my plecos. They don't always get a lot of food at the bottom. So here we have our group. I've had this group since they were tiny. I've had very little, if no, aggression issues yet. We'll get into that more in a few minutes. So this is the jewel cichlid, uh, Hemichromis bimaculatus. They have other species names as well. Uh, in terms of their size, these guys are not quite at full size, but they're getting close, so they'll go about five inches or so. And I haven't noticed a big difference between the fish in terms of male, female. Uh, coloration, as you can see, they are all pretty much the same. They've got red with that beautiful blue spangling. Again, I have not noticed a difference in the fish, and so uh, when it comes to sexing these fish, I have not been able to do it. Uh, with my own eyes at least because these fish look so similar in terms of their size in terms of their color and everything they've got going on now generally speaking these are aggressive fish these are not fish that I would recommend throwing in a community tank so what can you keep them with I personally like them just as you see them here on their own they are incredibly beautiful fish as you can see and so a, a tank like this looks really nice uh, not saying that you can do this long term because once we have a pair established in here, they are going to take that entire 40 gallon over. But if you just had one and you were looking to add that to a tank, I have had success keeping these fish with actually South American cichlids, even though these fish come from West African river systems. And those river systems tend to have very similar water parameters compared to uh, some of the South American environments. Uh, now, if I were keeping these with other fish, right now I've actually got some in with Oscars that are quite a bit larger, but for right now that is working out fairly well. Um, maybe some convict cichlids, possibly some Jack Dempsey's, although we'd have to see how that would work out as those Jack Dempsey's get a little bit larger. But again, finding tank mates for these guys can be a little bit tough, especially if they're in breeding mode. They are incredibly good at sticking out their territory, claiming that territory, defending it, defending fry, so you're going to have some aggression issues potentially on your hands with these fish. Now temperature, we've been keeping them at 78 degrees, they seem happy. Uh, you can go a little bit lower if you wanted to, 75, 76. Our pH is close to 8 and that is not ideal for these fish. They would probably prefer something a little bit lower, maybe in the 7 to 7.5 range, possibly even a little bit lower than that. But they've been okay, you know, in the upper 7, 7.8, close to 8 at times. Uh, water hardness, water quality, the average um, water hardness isn't anything close to what you would see, you know, in the African Great Lakes. So again, it's going to be more similar to what you'd see in a lot of the South American, Central American river systems. Uh, speaking of African Great Lakes, this is definitely not a fish I would keep with Mbunas. Uh, or the you know your standard African great uh, rift lake cichlids just because they tend to be a lot more aggressive believe it or not and one of the interesting things is when you're dealing with imbunas and African cichlids one of the ways that they communicate is by muting their colors to show that they are they are subdominant to whatever male is in there that's the dominant male these fish and a lot of South American cichlids don't have that same capability and so if you put them in a tank with imbunas and rift lake cichlids and they see these fish full color and they're not standing down so to speak they may continue to attack them and eventually kill them so while these are very aggressive fish this is definitely not a fish that i would personally feel comfortable with uh, in an imbuna tank or uh, you know your standard rift lake uh, african cichlid tank so tank size i think this is probably the minimum that i would suggest and that's a 40 gallon breeder and that might be a little bit small uh, we've had these fish since they were young and so we're not getting a lot of aggression issues yet again if we get a pair in this tank and they begin to breed that is going to create problems and all of the other fish are going to have to come out we knew that going into it um, 
In terms of food, we've been feeding them flakes, we've been feeding them pellets, some frozen blood worms, frozen brine shrimp. Uh, they don't seem to be particularly picky uh, as to what they eat. You can see that the decor here, this tank is definitely not beautiful. It was just set up to house these guys. Uh, driftwood, rocks, we've got some sand. They do like to dig, so live plants may be an issue. That plant you see on the left there is fake. The stuff that's floating is real to try and suck up some of the nitrates. But uh, they do have a tendency to dig. The jewel cichlids that are in the o Oscar tank, they like to dig, so live plants may be a little bit of a problem. Now, in terms of breeding, it's really not a terribly difficult setup. Uh, they need a flat surface. They are substrate spawners. They're going to have big spawns. Uh, and so these fish, when you see them in the, you know, out there in the hobby, they tend not to be very expensive. If this is a fish that you're going to breed to try and make money, there are much better options. I've seen bags of these fish, you know, six or seven, you know, small, relatively small juveniles go for a dollar at some of our auctions. So this is not a fish that's terribly expensive, at least not in our area, uh, because they have such big spawns and they are prolific breeders once they get started. Um, they are going to care for their fry and they're going to do so aggressively as I've mentioned before. So if we have a pair here, we will have to clear out the rest of the fish because they will be killed. Uh, the fry themselves are relatively easy to care for. They will eat crushed flakes, live baby brine, uh, they're relatively hardy. We had these fish. They were really considered almost fry when we got them. They were very, very tiny. Um, you know, they're a great fish. They're extremely beautiful, as you can see. They're relatively cheap, but there are challenges. They're going to get aggressive, and, and especially when spawning. And there are some issues when it comes to tank mates. What kind of, you know, fish do you put in with them? Again, I would personally stay away from any other types of African cichlids, even the other riverine African cichlids like Crebenzis, uh, they're too small, they're not aggressive enough to keep up with what these guys are going to be doing. Uh, so it's a nice fish, you just have to be really thoughtful about tank mates. So hopefully you found that useful. It's a great fish with a lot of color. If you like this video, share it, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.